Hello and welcome. You're watching our special program. I'm Sanul Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has affected our lives, our economy, our health and has spread to every area of the globe. The rapid spread of the new variants offers uh, clues as to how SARS-CoV-2 is adapting and how the pandemic will play out over the next several months. WHO has said that the highly mutated Omicron variant of COVID-19 could change the course of the pandemic. Due to the previous uh, lockdown and work from home culture, people's lifestyle are already severely disrupted. Many people have become physically inactive and have developed irregular eating patterns. While many of this is leading to unhealthy lifestyles and aggravation of lifestyle related diseases is also now taking place. In a situation like this, a multi sectoral approach Prompting healthier diets and increasing physical activity can help in slowing down what is now going to be called a diabetic epidemic and one that includes heart diseases as well. On beat diabetes, myths and facts, we will look at the impact of this and help a large number of people to prevent or control these metabolic disorders. Today we have with us experts to share with you advice on leading a healthy life and if you have any questions you would like them to answer for you, you can also send that to us. Our WhatsApp number over there is uh, 9167666941. You can also send in your questions or call us on that number and we will take your questions with our experts. Joining us on the program today, we've got Dr. S.S. Akbar. He's MBBS, MD, PG, DIP, D, uh, DIAB UK, and he is a consultant, dermatologist, consulting dermatologist and diabetes care clinic in Aligarh. Also with us today is Dr. Sunil Bansal. He's a senior cardio diabetologist director at the Bansal Diabetes Center in Agra. And also with us is uh, Dr. V.K. Jindal. He's also MBS MD Internal Medicine, Senior Consultant, Internal Medicine and Cardiology at the Cardio Medical Center in Faridabad. Thank you all for joining us uh, on NDTV. Let's just straight away dive in to the first question that we have. And that is for Dr. Bansal. Dr. Bansal, it was earlier believed that going ahead, COVID-19 would transform from a pandemic to an endemic stage virus, meaning most vaccinated people would have adapted to resist it. However, that seems to be some way ahead as well at this point on what we are getting to know of Omicron, for example. What is your opinion of the same? Do you think this is the beginning of the end of the pandemic? So good evening, everyone. Yes, it's true that expectation was that once we are vaccinated, the pandemic would end. But remember, none of the manufacturers of the vaccine or the scientists ever claimed that they would the vaccination would end the pandemic. The present generation of the vaccine is not capable capable of entering, uh, preventing the entrance of virus into the body. What they do is they prevent, they, they provide natural immunity, defensive immunity, so that the seriousness of the disease is decreased. The mortality is decreased, the hospitalization is decreased, but overall the disease becomes milder. And we can see in this present wave that only those patients are being hospitalized who are unvaccinated. Even the incidence of death is more in those who are not vaccinated. Unfortunately, because of the inequitable distribution of the vaccine between the poor and the rich nations, still large population of the world remains unvaccinated. This unvaccinated population is a fertile ground for the virus to multiply and mutate. And it keeps on producing new strains and new variants which keep the pandemic going. Ultimately, when we develop vaccination, which will provide sterilization, which will break the task 
कॉन्फिडेंस और वेन अम्पियोटिक रिलेशन विल डेवलप बिटवीन एन एंड वायरस बोथ विल लिव टू सर्वाइव ईच अटैक विदाउट मेकिंग देन ओनली द वुड एंड थैंक यू I see. Thanks for that. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, now, it is quite evident that Omicron uh, pierces through the immunity shield as well, generated after two vaccine doses. Will the third dose be able to restore good levels of protection? Is it needed to take uh, extra precautions for people with diabetes or heart diseases? Even, Doctor Akbar, if you could answer that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank, thanks, and uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to tell you, uh, basically, Omicron is a global burden and a global concern for all of us. <clears throat> as far as your question is concerned about the third dose of vaccine, I would like to tell you, uh, as you know, K Omicron, I, according to some studies and reports, I am telling you, K Omicron can easily uh, pierce the immunity and uh, and escapes basically the vaccine. So we are advising for third dose or you can say the booster dose, so that we can enhance. the vaccine effectiveness and we can store the okay. neutralizing antibodies levels as far as diabetic patients and heart disease patients are concerned they are supposed to take vaccine as early as possible the reason being because of i mean they are at increased risk of getting infected so in 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 uh, i mean other than the vaccination they need to check i mean their blood sugar under control i mean their blood pressure in case if they are hypertensive for heart diseases they are supposed to take the medicines on a regular basis thanks i see uh, dr chindal to come to you next now heart attack cardiac arrest and other cardiovascular diseases remain a major health concern around the world recently there has been a rise in the number of cardiovascular problems as well among younger population why has a heart attack become so prevalent according to you especially in young people hi boys not long ago heart attacks used to primarily involve the elderly population only but not anymore about 20% of the heart attacks are happening in people who are less than 40 years of age means one in every five heart attacks is happening in younger population the various factors which i think can be attributing to this are obesity and overweight due to poor eating habits and urban sedentary lifestyle substance abuse cigarette and hookah smoking and excessive alcohol intake which is gone rampantly higher in the younger population odd working hours anxiety and depression related to pressure to perform well at the work then your genetic predisposition the southeast asian population which makes us all to have very early epidemic disorders recent atherosclerosis and blockages of arteries at a very younger age gymming has become very popular in the younger population but gymming without a prior health check up to rule out any pre existing cardiac problem is very dangerous health supplements not only lead to in the skeletal mass it may increase the cardiac mass as well and as the increase cardiac mass increase the oxygen requirement and the nutritional requirement of the heart these all factors to a metabolic syndrome causes diabetes and eventually coronary artery disease i see so a lot of these factors are leading to actually heart attacks being seen in much younger people gone are the days when you would consider it only with the men who were middle aged perhaps or even older and gender also uh, patterns there seem to be changing as well let's uh, go to the next question now which is on diabetes and diabetes is associated with both micro Uh, vascular and macrovascular diseases affecting several organs including muscle skin heart brain and kidneys uh, what is meant by macrovascular and uh, microvascular complications if dr bansal could lay that out for us please so you see there are persisting high blood sugar persisting high blood pressure and persisting high cholesterol in most of the patients of diabetes 
majority of the complications of diabetes are because of involvement of the large and the small vessels of the body. When large and medium vessels are involved, we call them macrovascular angiopathy. And when small vessels are involved, we call them microvascular angiopathy. Macrovascular complications involve heart, brain, and leg. It leads to chest pain, angina, heart attack, heart failure, stroke, and claudication pain in the leg, which at times can lead to gangrene also. The microvascular complication in involve kidney, nerves, and eyes. In the nerves, they lead to neuropathy, which lead to tingling, numbness, loss of sensation in the foot, ulceration, infection at the bottom of the foot, and at, time, at times there could be gangrene of the toe. In the kidney, they lead to persistent protein leak in the urine and progressive kidney failure. I see. This can this can mm. lead to dialysis and renal transplantation. And finally, in the eye, it can lead to retinopathy, which can lead to temporary or permanent blindness. I see. So serious complications there. One must keep in yeah. mind. Uh, let me go to Dr. <coughs> Akbar next. Dr. Akbar, diabetic uh, neuropathy is a very serious complication of uh, diabetes. Around 60 to 70 percent of people with diabetes have some or the other form of this neuropathy or nerve damage is, is popularly known as. Can diabetic uh, neuropathy be reversed by any chance? If yes, then how? Yeah, basically neuropathy is what damaging of nerves over a period of time it all depends upon i mean the glycemic status of the patient maintained over a time as well as duration of diabetes well going back to the your question a body cannot naturally repair the nerves once they have been damaged we need to put the patient on certain medicines which help them to repair and i tell you okay, there are so many things which we advise our patients they who suffer from diabetic neuropathy, basically. They need to inspect their feet, I mean, on daily basis, if there is any fissure, or you can see if there is any injury or wound, so they need to get the treatment as early as possible so that it cannot, I mean, move ahead. I mean, the type of shoes they you they, this, they are supposed to put on, I mean, and the type of socks. These are all, I mean, certain, uh, I'm just telling you a few points regarding which they are supposed to follow so that i mean the incidence of neuropathy can be prevented and they need to keep their blood sugar under control with the help of i mean uh, there is one parameter uh, as far as medications are concerned that is known as hba1c so keeping all these things we can prevent this complication and it cannot be the body but the body cannot repair on its own I see. The body cannot repair on its own and one has to be careful about these. On that note, let's slip into a break. When we come back, we'll continue with this conversation on how to beat diabetes and also take care of your heart. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're watching Beat Diabetes Facts and Myths. Let's take the next question to Dr. Jindal. Dr. Jindal, many of us have an irregular daily routine. Many times we have to stay late at nights in office. Does this affect our heart and what precautions would you recommend for that? Yeah. yeah. Synchronization of your biological clock with the nature's clock is very important. Calling with your circadian rhythm makes your metabolism go away. You know, sleep is very important. Tissue repair, removal of toxins, and reduction of stress happens during sleep only. And changes in the sleep habits lead to persistently high levels of cortisol, which leads to behavioral disorders, hypertension, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. You know, we need to compare it with the phenomenon of jet lag. I believe majority of us must have faced jet lag sometimes in their life. What happens in jet lag? The biological clock stays at the place you started with, and the natural clock has moved to the time zone and the destination you have arrived at. 
the mismatch between the nature's clock and the biological clock leads to dizziness uneasiness gastrointestinal symptoms which we call as jet lag these people who are these guys who are working late night hours are chronic jet laggers in fact so they have to be brought out of this jet lag status to make them healthy i see so a lot of people should note that especially us in the media should be listening to this very very carefully let me take the next question to dr bansal dr bansal diabetic uh, retinopathy is a potentially serious eye disease that can result in permanent distorted vision or loss of vision how common is it see retina is a small me- small membrane between the brain and eye it connects your brain to the eye to which we see the world around and what happens is diabetes these small vessels they grow they uh, obstruct they blow up into small uh, grape like structure and they get distorted they the blood supply to the retina is affected as a result new vessels grow and they try to compensate for the obstructed vessels but unfortunately these vessels are not as strong as the native vessel and they rupture leading to retinal hemorrhage and retinal detachment detachment and loss of vision the stage prior to the development of new vessels is called non proliferative diabetic retinopathy which is a mild disease the stage after the development of new vessels is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy which is a potentially dangerous condition Unf- unfortunately most of the patients with retinopathy do not have any symptoms and this, when the symptoms develop they are already very late therefore to to detect them early it is it is necessary that all the patients of diabetic should have an annual eye checkup with your eye surgeon remember the eye surgeon will look into your eyes either through a camera or through a ct scan or through angiography and will treat accordingly but overall if you control your blood sugar if you control your blood pressure if you control your diet do regular exercise the chances of retinopathy are diminished significantly thank you I see so regular eye checkups are very important uh, Dr Akbar next question to you how does high blood pressure actually affect the kidney is it a life threatening condition as well and how complicated is the treatment for uh, nephropathy yeah i tell you basically affecting of kidneys either by high blood pressure or diabetes that is known as nephropathy diabetic nephropathy or hypertensive nephropathy actually millions of nephrons they are i mean in our kidney basically and over a period of time i mean the duration as well as the status of high blood pressure either high blood pressure or high blood glucose level affect uh, those nephrons as well as the blood vessels those are located inside our kidneys so in order to prevent such complications we need to control our blood pressure as well as diabetes if a patient is suffering from both diabetes and high blood pressure so that patient needs to control basically his blood pressure as well as diabetes and as far as the complication or uh, this thing is concerned there, uh, there is a one stage that is known as end stage renal disease that's a very life threatening condition in a patient patients ultimately needs basically a dialysis as well as uh, it, it happens when there is some i mean metabolic as well as you can say uh, so many things happen in kidneys due to which we need ask a patient to go for dialysis as well as medicine dialysis both are needed and ultimately transplantation may happen so in order to prevent from such situation we ask our patient to control the blood pressure as well as if the patient is diabetic so he needs to control both high blood pressure as well as diabetes and there are certain checkups which needs to be done just like you can say serum creatinine or rft renal function test and there is one one thing more uh, that needs to be done with the help of urine so those are checkups are very important for a patient in order to prevent such situation and that's a very life threatening condition when the egfr of a patient falls less than 15 you can say then patient lands into end stage renal disease it's a life threatening thing I see. Let's move on to the next question uh, to Dr. Jindal now. Sometimes due to the hectic schedule we're not able to exercise. So does walking while doing your daily chores at home or climbing stairs in the house or work substitute for that exercise? There is no substitute for planned exercise. 
but any exercise is always better than no exercise most uh, household chores they burn calories and they involve the various movements physically that we normally do in a gym so routine activities like walking your dog walking to the nearby grocery shop or the market and pacing in your office during the working hours they all help climbing stairs to office and to your apartment is a very 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 good exercise and is better than even walking as the vertical movement gives you lot of balance stability and resistance training more the number of calories burnt better you are thanks I see. So no substitute for a good workout, I guess. So that goes out for everybody across ages and gender. That's all the time we have on the program. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Before we leave, let's quickly remind our viewers: if you have any questions you would like to ask our experts as well, please send it to them on WhatsApp. The number is nine one six seven triple six nine four one. You can take a screenshot of. the number actually popping on your screen as well and that is a number to send all your questions also send us your name and your location so we can address it with them that's all the time we have that was uh, beating diabetes facts and myths we'll see you again tomorrow bye bye